Good afternoon everybody, Kurt Biker here. Out delivering the last of my Christmas cards. And then Christmas is over. <laughs> well, obviously it isn't, but no doubt by the time I've put this video up it will be. Right now it's uh, ooh, a week and a day until Christmas. But I do have a backlog of videos, so depending on whether I upload them in the right order or not, this one could be well into the new year. Anyway, I am very conscious now of saying anyway, <laughs> after uh, Hepcat Harley's impression. <laughs> Say anyway, 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 um, I've got a topic for today. And I did a video the other day about um, should I plan these topics or not. And I've even gone for, for planning. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I've got I've got some uh, some reminders on my telephone, so I'm going to try and get through them. I probably won't. Once you're riding, you can't really see it bouncing about. Sorry for sat nav, but not for reading. But I was uh, I was reading the other day. I was reading um, Visor Down, the website, motorbike website, and. Um, I shared a link on the first thing that I was reading on there, and it was about a helmet. I, now I can't remember if it was a Boss or a Foz or a, you know something. It had an O in it, and it was four letters long, and it was the RS1, I think. Um, you can go. And it was a flip. Well, not flip front. It was a flip rear helmet, which is a, a new concept. Not sure I like it. Uh, Matt Tutbarker put an interesting comment on um, the key part of the flip back is you kind of slide the helmet onto your head, I think, and then just the back flips down. I mean, it means that from a flipping perspective, it's pointless. Um, you know, it's not if you're going to one of those petrol stations that refuses you petrol if you're wearing your helmet. It's not like a flip front where you can then open up so they can see your face and don't have to take your helmet off. So you're not going to get that benefit out of it. But the benefit you do get is that it has no strap. So because the uh, the chin guard can get much closer to your head and the opening for the helmet can be much smaller because of the way you put it on, it doesn't need a chin strap. Which I thought was quite interesting. Which brings me to the actual topic. But I'm going to get past these lights first. Because of this kind of different way of putting the helmet on, it made me think, how safe is it? And because of what Matt was saying about not having a strap means that you're kind of entirely reliant on the hinge mechanism. And if that hinge mechanism breaks, if you come off, potentially your helmet will come off. Um, he was saying that he's, he's known of lots of flip front helmet coming off and the hinges failing in accidents so it's a potential isn't it and then you wouldn't have that strap holding it all together for you so I thought well, I wonder, wonder how safe it is and I'm going to have a bit of a read on Tinterweb about helmet safety standards it also made me think how safe is my helmet because my helmet is reasonably priced helmet but it's not a hugely expensive one it's a shark s900 you pick them up for under 200 quid now s900 c it is um, so it's not your kind of ri or showy 600 pound helmet it's much much cheaper than that so i can't justify spending 600 pounds on a helmet as they say if you've got a 50 quid head get a 50 quid helmet uh, my head I think he's worth about 169.99, so job done. Hey, um, but I thought, how can I find out? So I did a bit of uh, searching, and it didn't take long. Google being what it is, and I found the Sharp testing. Not Shark. It's not by the people who made my helmet. Sharp testing. It's a government thing. More lights. Actually, quite handy for reading the screen. Although the screen has just decided to go all light, all dark on me, so I need to think about that. 
That isn't going to work from a planning point of view, is it? So the sharp testing, what they do is they buy helmets from retail outlets. So they don't go and ask the uh, helmet manufacturer to provide one, where of course they could fiddle the tests, they could make it stronger, they could, they could Volkswagen their helmets. <laughs> they actually just go and buy them. More lights. I'm just going to keep talking for this one, they should be short. So yeah, they actually just go and buy them from a shop, um, take them away, test them. So in theory, they're bought as you would buy them. Um, certainly for me, I won't buy a helmet off the internet with all these copies about you have no idea what you're getting. So um, they buy them, they take them away, they test them, they do drop tests, they drop things on them, do all sorts of different tests to see how structurally sound they are and how they would react in an accident. Because obviously in an accident, you know, you're potentially bouncing down the road. So I did read that usually a helmet takes uh, on average six collisions in a crash because you have that first one where you hit the ground and then as you're bouncing down the road, you get more and more bumps on it. So it has to take a certain number of hits. Anyway, I looked at my helmet, it gets four out of five stars which kind of feels good. I wonder what's missing on the fifth star. Um, slightly worrying, isn't it, I suppose, that, that extra star. What, what won't my helmet protect? If it's my ears, I'm not so worried. Um, I could probably do to shave a bit off them. Anyway, uh -huh. move on. So, this planning isn't working, is it? I can still digress like anybody's business. Um, so I started looking at other helmets and thinking, so who gets five stars? And who does, who gets one star? Who basically, presumably with one star, they could barely get the thing back to the testing site without it crumbling in the hands. And it threw up some, some big surprises, actually. Um, I was quite shocked, in a way, to think that some of the big manufacturers um, get some pretty low ratings. So, there was an Arai, for example, that got two stars. And to me, Arai shouts quality. Oh, that's what I've always been told. There was a Shoei that gets three stars. That was the lowest rating they got. And again, I was kind of surprised that helmets by, made by companies like Arai and Shoei wouldn't all be five stars. You think the amount of effort they put into advertising how safe they are and all the things they do, you would think they would make absolutely certain that they would pass all of these tests and get the, the maximum possible mark. But they didn't. And I thought, well, so what does this mean then? Because I've, I've mentioned it before, when Aldi, the supermarket, was selling lids and they're selling a, you know, a helmet for 40 quid and Lid will do the same. And they've got the EU standards, so they've, you know, they've meet the minimum standard that you have to meet to sell a helmet. You're going the wrong way. And they've got the gold sticker, so they've got the minimum standards you need to ride on a track. But there's always something about it, isn't it? It's 40 quid. It's, it's dirt cheap. Um, so I tried to look that one up. Unfortunately, they hadn't tested that one. Although I don't know who the manufacturer is, it's not going to come up as a little so you know, it might well be fine um, but um, it was quite a surprise to find that at the time I looked there were nine five-star helmets that you get for under 100 quid there was actually a five-star helmet so the best from their testing that you could possibly get for 59.99 I wrote that one down the Ducini D832 never heard of it never heard of it at all but it does beg the question if you can get 59.99 lid from Duccini sounds like a pasta and that gives you five stars but Arai is selling a helmet that only gives you two do you need an expensive lid and can you be sure that when you're buying a big brand name that that means you're getting the best protection certainly next time I buy a helmet I am going to be going to that site I also looked at Mrs C's helmet because we bought her a, a cheaper helmet uh, ours was an MDS 
mainly because we weren't sure whether she was going to like going on the back of a bike at all. Um, the other day when we were looking at helmets I was saying to her, look, I think it's about time we got you a better one. Turns out her helmet's a four star one as well and the one that potentially we would have replaced it with is no safer. Even though it costs about three times as much. And she's a fan of our eyes as well. Ugh. Could get expensive, couldn't it? <laughs> Anyway, I thought that, was, thought that was food for thought. So maybe it's not a case of if you've got a 40 quid head, buy a 40 quid helmet. But more of a case of if you've got a two star head, buy a two star helmet. It certainly changes the way I've thought about them. Let me know what you're thinking then there in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe. And I'll talk to you all again soon.